In lesson 15, we're going to look at putting all of our solids together. So go ahead um, and evaluate each solid mentally on the screen. I'll remove um, the next one. So thinking about whether we're doing um, volume equals area of the base times the height for prisms, or if we're doing one third area of the base times the height for pyramids, thinking about the base shape. So in this first one, our base shape is a triangle. So we would be doing length times width or base times height divided by two. So three times eight is 24 divided by two is 12, then times by the height. So you'd be doing 12 times 10 and getting 120 for that. So trying to do that in your head without using a calculator. Um, this next one's a cone. So we're going to be doing area of the base times the height divided by three. So for this one, we've got a circle. So we're going to be doing R squared. So five squared, which is 25 times pi. And then we're going to be timesing by this height and dividing by three. So you could just divide the height by three instead. Okay, so you could just divide this by three instead, trying to do it mentally, which then would be 25 pi times two, which would be 50 pi, keeping your numbers a little bit smaller there. Um, Next one has the same base area as this one. So we've got 25 pi again. So R squared is 25 pi, and then we're timesing it by eight. Four 25s is 100, like four quarters is a dollar. We've got two fours here in the eight. So this is gonna be 200 pi. Pyramid, so base shape is a rectangle, three times four, so we're getting 12. And then again, we'll be timesing it by the height and dividing by three. So remember, you could just divide this by three, which is two, so six divided by three is two, times 12 is 24 to kind of help your calculations there. All right, um, so let's take a look at the two shapes here and answer these questions about each of the shapes. So when we take a look here, what measurements do we still need in this first one to find the volume? So remember our two volume formulas, okay? And what do we need? So in this case, we need the radius. Okay, and then in the um, oblique rectangular uh, prism, we're going to need the height. So it doesn't give us the height over here. So we need the height and we need the radius. Okay, so the radius in the first one, height in the second one. And how could we find it? So in this, in this um, cone, hopefully you see this right triangle here. So you can do Pythagorean theorem in the cone because we've got the hypotenuse and we've got one of the legs. We can't do that in this one because we don't have the hypotenuse here. We only have the leg, but we do have an angle here. So we've got the leg and an angle. So we're gonna be able to do trig in that second one. Um, and then which volume formulas do we need for each? So for the cone, it's one third area of the base times the height. And for the prism, it's area of the base times the height. So go ahead um, and find the radius and the height in each of these and then come back. So the radius in this one, we would be doing eight squared equals seven squared plus R squared. So doing that Pythagorean theorem. So this would be 64 equals 49 plus R squared. 
So subtract 49 from both sides. And we get 15 equals r squared. So then we can square root that to get our radius. So the radius of this is going to be 3.87. And then let's calculate the height of this next one. So we see that we have this angle 65 here. The H is the opposite side. And the 3 is the adjacent side. So if you remember back to last unit, we can set up a tangent function. So we'll get tangent of 65 equals the opposite side H over the adjacent side, 3. So tan 65 is 2.144 equals h over 3. So we can do a proportion here and cross multiply. So multiply 2.144 times 3 and you get 6.43 equals h. So those were the two missing pieces that we needed. So now let's go ahead and you can calculate the volume using these formulas. You can try that and then come back. So for our cone, the volume is equal to one third area of the base, which is a circle. So we're gonna do pi times the radius squared, that's the area of our base, times the height of our cone, and the height of our cone is 7. So this right here is just the area of the base. So then we can just calculate that. So I would do 3.87 times 3.87 first, and then times by pi. then times by 7, and then divide by 3. So I would multiply all of this together and then divide by 3. So you should get 109.8 um, units cubed for that volume. And you can start by doing 1 divided by 3. So you just get 0.333 in your calculator, then times by pi, then times by 3.87 times 3.87, since you have two of those, and then times by 7. That'll work also. All right, then the prism, so you're doing area of the base, which is a rectangle. So you're doing 7.5 times 4.5 for the area of that base, and then multiplying by the height. So let me get this in a better spot so I can actually write it all out. All right, so we're going to do... Um, Area of the base, so 7.5 times 4.5, then timesing by the height that you calculated of the prism. So this height, you got a 6.43. So just multiply those together. So 7.5 times 4.5 times 643 and you get that the volume is equal to 217.0 um, to the nearest tenth. And then this is meters cubed. So remember this one has two bases, right? So we've got those two bases. So this one is just area of the base times the height. You don't have to divide by three. All right, then let's go ahead and calculate these. So go ahead and try that um, all in one step.
well, not in one step, but without all of the like separated out questions, you're going to be missing a piece in order to find the volume. So you're going to need to make sure you calculate that first and then plug it into the formula. So try the first one, come back to the video, then you can try the second one. All right, so for this first one, our base shape is this triangle. So we've got, uh, we need to do base times height divided by two here. And your legs are the 48 and what's missing here. So we're going to need to do Pythagorean theorem, okay, to find this missing piece. So 73 squared is equal to X squared plus 48 squared. 73 squared is 5,329. Um, 48 squared is 2,304. Then you can subtract 2,304 to both sides. To get 3,000. 25 equals x squared, square root both sides, and we get um, that x equals 55. So that's that missing side of your base. So that's going to help us calculate the area of the base. So the base is going to be equal to um, 55 times 48 divided by 2 since it's a triangle. So 55 times 48 divided by 2 gives us 1,320 for the area of the base. Then this is a prism. So the volume is just going to be area of the base times the height. So we've got the area of the base here. So now we'll just multiply it by the height of the prism, which is 31. And so we'll do 1320 times 31, and we get 4,920 centimeters cubed. So you can go ahead and find the volume of this cone and then come back. So volume formula for a cone is one third area of the base times the height. Um, and we do not have the radius or the height in this case. So we're going to have to find both of those. We do have this as 10, which is over here as well. So we're going to need to um, do trig. Or if you remember your special right triangle formulas, this is 30. So the side across from the 30 is half of the hypotenuse. So you may just know that that's five, and then you could um, do Pythagorean theorem to find the radius. I'm gonna do trig just in case um, anybody had forgotten that and they want to, uh, or they needed to do trig for it. So this um, side is the opposite side of this 30 degree angle and the 10 is the hypotenuse. So we would be setting up a sine function so sine of 30 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 30 is 0.5. So then we're going to multiply both sides by 10. And we're going to get that 5 equals h. So now we know the height of this shape is 5. And then we need the radius in order to calculate the area of the base. So now we have two sides of that right triangle. So now I know that this is five and this is 10. So I could do Pythagorean theorem um, to find this radius. So 10 squared is equal to R squared plus five squared. So 100 is equal to R squared plus 25. Subtract 25 from both sides. Whoops. So you get 75 
is equal to r squared, and then you can square root that. So square root of 75 is 8.66. So your radius is 8.66. So then you have all the information you need to find the volume. So we'll start with the area of the base. So the base area, the base shape is a circle. So you're going to be doing pi times the radius, which is 8.66 squared. So if we do 8.66 times 8.66 times pi, you should get the area of that base to be about 235.6. So for volume, we need to do one third times the area of the base times the height of the cone and the height of the cone is five. So again, you can multiply um, the 235 times five and then divide by three if you want to. You can also type in one divided by three to get that decimal of 0.333 and then times it by 235.6. Um, times 5, and you should get 392.6 um, if we round to the nearest tenth, it'll be 0. 0.7. And then that was inches cubed. All right, so how did we know which measurements needed to be calculated? So based on the formula, whatever you were missing. And so if we were doing, um, you know, we had volume equals area of the base times the height or one third area of the base times the height, depended on what this base was. If it was a circle, then you needed to do pi times the radius squared. If it's a triangle, then you're doing base times height divided by two. If it's a rectangle or a square, then you're doing length times width. Um, so kind of depends on what the base shape is, what you need. Okay, and that's for this as well. And then we always need the height of the solid. So if that's missing, we certainly need to find that. Um, calculation strategy based on whether you had two, you know, kind of two sides. In each case, it was a triangle. So did we have two sides of the triangle? Okay. Or did we have one side and one angle? So if we had two sides of the triangle, then it was Pythagorean theorem. If we had a side and an angle, then we were doing trig. Okay. Which are those two? And then just thinking about what did you think was easiest and what did you think was most difficult? That's going to be, um, you know, individual to you. All right, then suppose that we were looking at this shape and we rotated it 360 degrees. Go ahead and draw a sketch of the shape that would be created in your book. So here's um, what that solid would look like if it was rotated. So then let's go ahead and find the volume. So do you happen to see kind of two different shapes here? So if we label this, so kind of this top half is a cone. Its height is three. Okay, this radius is two for that cone. Below here, we see a cylinder. Okay, the cylinder also has a radius of two, and this time the height is one, two, three, four, five. So this one has a height of five on the bottom here. So if you can see those two different shapes. So if we were going to find the volume here, we would need to find the volume of both of these and then add them together. So if I'm going to find the volume of the cone, that's one third area of the base. The base is a circle. Okay, so pi times the radius, which is 2 squared, and then times the height. 
and the height of that cone is three. So if I look at this, one third of three is just one. So I'm just gonna simplify that out. So we're just gonna end up with four pi for this volume of the cone. And then the volume of the cylinder, okay, is area of the base, which is pi times that radius squared again, which is still two, and then times the height, which is five. So this one's gonna be four pi times five, so 20 pi for that bottom. Then the overall volume, we would just add these. Okay, so the total volume is gonna be four pi, four pi plus 20 pi, so 24 pi. Or if we did to the nearest 10th, 24 times pi is 75 point four units cubed. So hopefully you saw that you were creating a cone and a cylinder. Okay, so we saw a cone on top and we saw a cylinder on bottom. How are they similar? They have the same base. Okay, actually exact same base, right? And then how are they different? So in this case, um, different heights. Also, if we're just talking about what's different between a cone and a cylinder, okay, the cone, uh, the cone's cross sections get smaller. Parallel to that base get smaller where the cylinders stay the same. So if I get rid of this on here. So if we look at these cylinder cross sections parallel to the base, they're all staying the same size where the cones the biggest one is the base and then they get smaller and smaller until they disappear. So, you know, what kinds of things can we get through tracing cones or through rotating around? So the rotation always gives you a circle. So the rotation is always giving you a circular base. So you're going to be getting cones or cylinders. And they could be hollow, like we've seen. So we've seen kind of cylinders within cylinders. And now we're seeing a cone on top of a cylinder. But those are going to be the shapes that it would break down into. All right, so what dimensions do we need to calculate the volume of a cone? So for every volume, we're going to need height. And we're going to need area of the base. So for a cone, the base area is pi times the radius squared. So we're going to need height and we're going to need a radius. If we have the height and the radius, we'll be able to calculate the volume. Um, for a triangular pyramid, so again, we're going to need the height of the shape. Okay, so the height of the pyramid. And then for the triangular base, we're going to need base times height divided by 2. So we're going to need the legs. Well, I guess it wouldn't have to be a right triangle. So we're going to need the base and the height of the triangle. Okay, so the height. So you need not only the height of the base. Okay, so we're going to need the base and the height here. So the base and the height of the base, but also the height of the pyramid. So kind of two heights in there. One is of the base, one is of the whole thing. And then what's different between the B and H in the triangle formula and the B and H in the pyramid volume formula? So that's what we just talked about here. So this big capital B is area of the base. Where a lowercase b is just the length of the base. So the big B represents an, an area, okay? And the little B represents just the linear length. And then what formulas are used when calculating the volume of a cylinder? So circle area, since the base is a circle, 
So pi times the radius squared and then the volume formula for a two-based prism, area of the base times the height. Then your lesson summary. So it's important that we know that we have all of the measurements that we need in calculating um, volume. So when we're talking about a cylinder, that's area of the base times the height. So we would need the radius, okay, since that's going to be pi r squared. So either the full-on area of the base or um, the radius to get the formula. And then you need the height of the shape. This was all given in this paragraph up here. Then the cone that's pictured, for that we need the radius, but then we need the height of the cone because this is not the height. So remember your height is perpendicular to that base, so we need this height. So we would figure that out with Pythagorean theorem to then plug into the cone formula. So cylinder formula is area of the base times the height. Cone formula is one-third area of the base times the height. <clears throat>